Good day to all the virtual participants of the ICME 2021. Welcome and mabuhay. Congratulations, Pimea, for organizing this first international virtual conference. This is Richard Gonzalez. I am the founding president of Pimea and currently the chief executive advisor of Indochains International Consultants and a staff consultant of the Asian Development Bank. Formerly an associate professor of psychology at De La Salle University and a senior education specialist at the World Bank IBRD for Middle East and North Africa region. For today, I am happy to share my latest research program on the assessment practices entitled From Face-to-Face -to, -face to Virtual Assessment changes in the student assessment practices during COVID-19 among Filipino teachers. This is the first of the series of studies in my research program on student assessment during and post COVID-19. So why did I go into this study? We all know that COVID-19 pandemic has hugely affected our society. The school system was not spared when the government decided to close them until the pandemic is over, or at least to achieve herd immunity. However, the teachers were not ready. They were compelled to shift from face-to-face -to, -face to distance, online, and blended learning environments. They were forced to learn and use new tools and techniques in teaching assessment, and even classroom management. In other words, they were put into a situation like a cold meat on a hot pan. So this situation motivated me to know how selected Filipino teachers change attitudes and practices concerning students' assessment. I posted five research questions for this study. I wanted to find out the answer to the following research problem. One, what changes teachers made in student assessment in online and blended learning environments during COVID-19 pandemic? Two, were the teachers concerned that the changes to the assessment they made in response to COVID-19 will negatively impact the culture of assessment? Three, what and how decisions were made on student assessment. Four, what changes, if any, would the teachers like to continue to support assessment during and post COVID-19? And lastly, what are the professional needs of teachers? For my research methodology, I use descriptive research design because I sought to accurately and systematically describe a population situation or phenomenon. In this study, I included 436 teachers from the Philippines who agreed to participate in the online survey. Predominantly females, 82% from government public schools, 38% are college tertiary teachers, 21 are secondary school teachers, and 19% are elementary school teachers, and the remaining 22% are postgraduate, vocational, Tibet teachers, and other levels. 38% have master's degree, 20% have doctoral degree, 36% have bachelor's degree with master's units, and the remaining 6% indicated others. 82% of the participants attended the training on assessment during COVID-19. I developed research questionnaire, which was floated via online using SurveyMonkey. I included 14 items designed using the SurveyMonkey platform. I included 14 items, and the first item asked, I asked the participant to answer their willingness to participate in the survey. The other 13% are a combination of multiple choice, yes or no, male or female, checklist and rating scales, 
using a four-point Likert type response scale. One disagree, two is four dis strongly disagree. Three open-ended questions were included that asked what changes they would like to continue, if any, in what way they are concerned about the changes of assessment during COVID-19, and what capacity building needs they think are needed. The survey questionnaire was pre-tested a small group of samples before it was shared online. Additionally, I requested some colleagues to review and validate the survey questionnaire before I made it live online. I used descriptive statistics to analyze data using mainly frequency distribution and percentages. I use social media to share the survey questionnaire using SurveyMonkey. So SurveyMonkey is considered as the world's most famous free online survey tool. After the 14 survey items were reviewed and completed, the researcher designed the survey using SurveyMonkey. Consequently, I shared the survey link via email invitation, social media posts, particularly Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Survey link was shared for a period of one month in October 2021. After a month, more than 460 respondents came back. However, some of these were eliminated because they are either not teaching COVID-19 or not teaching in the Philippines. I informed the participants about the purposes of this study as part of the informed consent. After carefully cleaning the data, the data were subjected to descriptive statistics, particularly frequency and percentages. Since my intention in this study is purely descriptive, only frequency counts and percentages were calculated using Excel. So it was not sophisticated after all. Qualitative responses were analyzed using content analysis. I use content analysis to determine the presence of certain words, words, themes, or concepts within a given qualitative data, in this case, text, slide 2012, after which I identified meanings and relationships of the world, words, themes, and concepts shared. Now we go to the findings. For the first set of results, I look into the specific changes made in student assessment during COVID-19. Very significantly, 93% of the respondents made or introduced at least one change in student assessment during COVID-19. Specifically, 91% became more flexible in giving deadlines for assignments and performance tasks. 72% changed the timing of submission of assessment tasks. 52% used rubrics more often as possible to let the students know how they were assessed. And 51% asked more reflective questions and performance tasks. For the second set of results, okay, the second set of findings reveal what concerns raised by the teachers. Remarkably, 72% of the respondents revealed that changes would not negatively impact the assessment culture during COVID-19. Specifically, 54% were concerned on the validity of assessment results. 53% were concerned on the additional workload. 51% were concerned on the limited option for assessment, online assessment, and 47% were concerned on the lack of training and skills in giving formative assessment. For the third key findings, what motivated teachers to decide initiating changes in their assessment practices? These are what I noted. 72% strongly agreed that considerations and student capacity to access technology were more important during COVID-19 times. 
55% strongly agreed that the abilities of students to learn in an online or blended learning, a blended environment were crucial. 52% strongly agreed that assessment practices were changed based on students' needs. And 47% strongly agreed that school policies influence the changes in student assessment. For the first set of findings pertaining to the changes that teachers would like to continue to support learning, okay, noticeably, more than 80% of the teachers suggested some changes must continue to ensure a strengthen, uh, to strengthen assessment practices during COVID-19. More than 80% of the teachers revealed that they like to continue supporting changes by providing more independent tasks for students, exploring more assessment techniques and alternatives, using rubrics more of more for, for more objective assessments, attending more in-service training programs like seminars and webinars, coordinating closely with parents, providing parents orientation, and being more compassionate to students, especially those having challenges of technology and learning materials. Lastly, in this study, I sought to determine the professional needs of, uh, of the respondents. 90% per, 90 90 of the respondents revealed attending in-service teacher training on assessment during COVID-19. Among the many responses, this what stood out. More training on performance-based assessment, training on online and e-assessment, school to provide support and guidance on assessment and provide assessment exemplars. They want to have more models and exemplars to, give them, to guide them accordingly. So what can I conclude in this study? Undeniably, assessment practices were hugely affected by COVID-19, but the positive side was that teachers and students were able to adjust learning and excited to learn more about student assessment. Teachers were not ready to, were not ready to conduct student assessment in blended and modular and online learning environment. Another positive note on COVID was that the new normal situation encourages encourages the teachers to explore the use of assessment, new assessment regime, and considered student needs and condition and decided what assessment tools and methods to use. Lastly, the pandemic has caught us unaware, so to ensure good and effective assessment practices, teachers need to update their knowledge and skills to be able to do assessment well without sacrificing the true essence of assessment, which is to know how and what students have learned. So my dear participants, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful engagement and hope we'll have a wonderful engagement during our Q&A portion, if we got time. So you can follow me on Twitter and soon on YouTube, All About Assessment. Thank you and maraming salamat to all of you. Assalamualaikum. Good day.